What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, May 27th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID, any other viruses that could be a health threat to you, and climate change, which does a threat to our health and our daily lives as well. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Give this a thumbs up. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube will push out this content share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. Today is not a terribly busy news day or data day because it is a holiday here in the U.S., though we do have some international data, which we'll get to in just a moment, a couple news stories, and then we are going to take a look at some data, including some wastewater data as well. We'll take a look at our daily stuff and a climate note for today on something that occurred yesterday in the United States that was very significant. All right, starting off, New Zealand did update their cases for this week, and it says 6,636 new cases and seven deaths have been added. The... Uh, Average, the seven-day rolling average of cases was 948, and there were 282 cases in the hospital as of midnight on Sunday, the Ministry of Health said. So again, that's 6,636 new cases in New Zealand, and that is some of their highest levels in a very long time. In fact, here, it says here, it comes as epidemiologist Professor Michael Baker says, New Zealand is at its highest peak for the virus in nearly eight, wow, 18 months since they have seen levels this high in New Zealand. All right, Bruce Springsteen makes news again. Yet again, he's having another health issue. This time it's with his vocal cords or something in relation to that. Bruce Springsteen cancels shows over vocal issues. And he was on a European tour, so he has had to cancel, I believe it's three shows that he has canceled. And because of that, um, he's not able to perform for 10 days. That's the doctor's orders. No performing for 10 days. I really hate to have to go out and say this, but pretty soon it's going to get to the point where he's not going to be able to perform anymore. He has had so many health issues over the past several years, which we do know he has had COVID several times. Members of his East Street band have actually admitted, no, Bruce has had it several times, which is not a good thing at all, and it's taken a toll on his health. All right, moving on to this. Second case of Mpox disease for this year, I assume they mean, has now been recorded in South Africa, so Mbox, it's still out there. Remember, it became a big deal in the summer of 2022, and then 2023 it was a little bit less of a deal. Well, it's it, hey, it is still circulating. All right, I wanted to show you this. I meant to show you this last week at some point, forgot to do it. That's fine because today, like I said, it's a slow news day, it's the last piece of news we have. This comes from Mike Horger. and yeah, as you know, he does COVID modeling. There's several people that do COVID modeling. And he is one of them, and he is saying, for the uh, next month or so, he expects transmission for COVID to hover around 400,000 to 450,000 infections a day. He says, think of that smooth red line, and he's referring to this one right here. You can see here, that's the projection of where we're going to go. So we're basically just seeing a bump in the road. Not looking like it's going to be a major wave yet. And I say yet for a reason. Let's read this. Think of the smooth red line forecast as the gentle base of a tall playground slide we will try to scale starting in August. So basically what he's saying is, right now, as you can see here, we're getting this bump in the road. Levels are going to hover between 400,000 and 450,000. Then what comes next is, potentially the second half of summer, we may see our big, uh, you know, summer wave that we have been seeing in the, since, basically since COVID started. We have always seen some sort of a rise in COVID uh, back in 2020. We had the first initial COVID wave. There was some sort of a rise in the summer. And then, as you know, as we all know, in 2021, the Delta wave came along. And that was oh so dangerous, especially in the south, then eventually in the north as well. So we will probably see something come in 
the second half of summer. Well, it's hard to say what that is actually going to be, though. All right, moving on now to this. Let's take a look at the pollen levels for today. And today's pollen levels, 47% of the country is in medium status. The only place red today is in Nebraska and portions of South Dakota. And the rest of the country is not doing terribly bad. In the east, we do have thunderstorms, showers and thunderstorms. You may hear thunder behind me in just a moment. It is pouring rain here right now. But uh, we do have showers and thunderstorms in the east and maybe some severe weather. I'll talk about that in just a moment. I have to show you this now. Here's today's air quality values because, hey, this impacts our health as well. And air quality values, why they're still, you know, concerning in the east, they are getting a little bit better. Where they're really concerning is, again, the Gulf Coast region, uh, Louisiana, back into Texas, even Mississippi as well. But the Reds, they are in Texas. And wow, look at this near Galveston. What is this? 176, so nearly a value of 200 when you're measuring the particles of air quality. Uh, yeah, this is not good. Please, air purifiers running in this area. Keep your windows closed. Limit your time outside. And if you have to go outside, consider wearing an N95 or better mask because it's the right thing to do that can impact your lungs if you have COPD if you have asthma if you have any of those problems breathing problems it will impact your breathing bad air quality is bad when you have breathing problems all right let's take a look now at what is going on with the heat related illness sure I don't know if this updated today or not We'll find out as this refreshes. But again, the southeast has been continuing to see problems. And we're going to start to see this fill in a little bit more in southern Texas. Okay, it looks like this may have updated. Okay, yep, that's interesting. It says through May 24th and updated on May 20th. So this did update today. And you can see here, we are also starting to see, look at this, in the northeast, much higher than average. I mean, it was warmer in the northeast, but it was in heat wave type warning or excessive heat warning type warning but uh take a look at this at the calls for it it's starting to occur in the northeast even here in southeast pennsylvania where i'm at florida you're considering continuing to see calls but some areas are actually near average and a couple i think are actually saying lower than average yep here's hillsborough county florida that's actually lower than average all right speaking of heat we do have heat advisories up once again and excessive heat warnings up again for portions of southern Texas. Let's uh, click on them and let's see what uh, levels they're talking about today. And today they're saying heat index, index values could be up to 117. So that's concerning for your health as well. All right. I have to show you something from yesterday because this did injure people. It threatens your life. Yesterday was a terrible Terrible, severe thunderstorm day. Kentucky got absolutely obliterated by severe thunderstorms. There was a uh, really bad tornado that went through portions of Kentucky last night. And unfortunately, it did cause injuries. Caldwell, Kentucky, that's Caldwell County, uh, north-northeast of Princeton, Kentucky. Three people were injured. Trees went down across the roads. Please, when you see a severe thunderstorm warning, or more importantly, when you see a tornado warning, and they're saying there's a tornado on the ground, go inside immediately. At one point last night, there was a report of people standing outside, taking pictures, you know, with their phone, going like this, taking pictures of a tornado while it was moving at them. If you see that tornado coming... Get to your safe place. If you can get underground, get underground immediately. Please do not mess around. Tornadoes are dangerous. They carry debris. You know, there could be uh, flying pieces of wood. There could be flying nails. You know, it could poke you in the eye. It could stab you. Uh, it, it's just dangerous. Sheet metal, that could cut you. It's not good. I, I cannot stress enough. If you hear a tornado warning, go off for your area. If you live in an area that has tornado sirens, if those sirens are going off, take shelter immediately. Want to learn more about climate? You can do so by going to my other Twitter page, Climate Data Report. Just search it in the Twitter bar. It should come up. All right, taking a look at EMS calls for Philadelphia yesterday. Hey, it's below 800. 788 EMS calls yesterday. That is a good thing. Let's see what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. 
Yeah, there's 15 calls right now. I'm seeing cardiac emergency, not once, not twice, but three times. I'm seeing stroke and a whole bunch of other calls right now. So it's busy there. How about Chester County, Pennsylvania? We can see there's a few calls going on. Not terribly busy. Breathing difficulty, seizures. Uh, you would expect a few breathing difficulty calls today. The air is really thick right now. The humidity is high. It's harder to breathe when that happens. So far, so good for me. I had the air conditioner on here. Obviously, we turned it off to record. Uh, dew points when they're high. That can cause breathing problems. And you saw the air quality. It's still a little bad here in southeast Pennsylvania. All right, let's take a look at some wastewater sites now somewhere we have not looked at in a while and i promised in the comments yesterday to someone that we would take a look at hawaii because let's face it hawaii is seeing quite the increase right now this is the sand island wastewater site for honolulu and i have to show you this take a look at this wastewater there it is rapidly rising at this time for covid you can see here you are seeing a rapid increase for covid rsv at this time is relatively flat influenza a there is an ever so slight increase you can see here if we take a look at the pathogens you can see they are increasing ever so slightly influenza b as well is seeing a slight increase hmpv slight increase as is norovirus no mpox and oh my we do have some detections of hepatitis a at this time again there is a pretty significant increase ongoing for covid and this is the population of 390,000 people but remember hawaii it's a big tourist destination it's a big vacation destination so you have constantly though it says 390,000 people you constantly have people from all over the world coming to visit the islands and you know that does bring the risk of the spread of these viruses let's take a look at what's going on with this other honolulu site because i believe this one is rising as well let's take a look and see what's going on at this facility okay there was some sort of rise it dropped a little bit the overall trajectory though even with that drop shows it is trending upward uh, rsv no issues at this time no influenza a issues at this site no influenza b issues hmpv is dropping at this time Norvirus is also seeing somewhat of a rise this time, and it is listed as high. I'll tell you what, yeah, it probably is moderate to high. That looks like it would be over 50,000 pathogens. No mpox issues, and hepatitis A, not much of an issue at this time. So there we go. We looked at two sites in Hawaii. I promise we are going to try and include Hawaii more often, and you know what? Here's somewhere else we don't include often enough. Anchorage, Alaska. Now let's see what's going on there, if it comes up. Sometimes the site uh, slows down. Okay, Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah, you're seeing an increase as well. It's not rapidly going up like what we just saw in Hawaii, but it's a steady climb. So you're starting to increase. It's coming up as high levels. Hawaii, by the way, for COVID, that was high levels. I mean, that, that's a rapid rise. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is dropping slightly. Influenza B is dropping slightly. HMPV is dropping. Wow. Norovirus. I mean, it is starting to drop, but 300,000 pathogens at one point back on May 15th. That is really high. But again, it is starting to drop. Mpox, not much of an issue at this time. Matter of fact, no detections of it. And hepatitis A at this time. We are seeing that... There are just a couple detections of that right now. Let's take a look at what is going on in Canada. I have to refresh this. We're going to take a look at Canadian wastewater. And it says number of sites showing an increase, 16. Number of sites showing no change, 34. And 12 sites are showing a decrease. Zero sites are high. 10 sites are moderate. 13 wastewater sites are low. And 39 sites are new. This is for COVID now. This is all for COVID. And zero of them are high. That's really a good thing. All right, what else do we want to take a look at? Oh, we do want to take a look at the latest uh, variant update, because I want to bring something to your attention. KP.2 is the dominating variant at 28.5% in the United States. And though I don't have a news article up here, I did see one this morning that stated, see this KP.3 variant that's at 12.7%? That is now the dominating variant over in Australia. So I find that rather interesting. I did tweet that out uh, this morning. Matter of fact, let me see here. Can we go back here? Let's pull it up here. Pretty sure I just tweeted it out. Let's see here. Yeah, here it is right here, coming from uh, Mike Honey. It shows here, KP.3 continues to dominate, flirt KP.2, and shows strong 
growth in most states over in Australia. So that's relatively interesting. We'll have to watch and see. Maybe at some point that will be something that takes over here in the United States. All right, let's take a look at epidemic growth status. You can see here it's growing in many states, uh, Texas, Louisiana, New Arizona, Montana. It's definitely growing in Hawaii. We just saw the wastewater. COVID is growing there. And remember, people do take vacations in Hawaii. Hawaii is a huge tourist area. It's also growing up in Massachusetts as well. Then it's likely growing stable or uncertain, likely declining, and everything else in between elsewhere. All right, taking a look at New Jersey for today. New Jersey has 150 hospitalizations, but only 59 out of 70 hospitals reported. So the likely number is probably somewhere between 175 and maybe close to 200 at this point. Four people on a ventilator, discharges 25 in the ICU 16. Again, all these numbers are significantly underdone because 11 hospitals are not reporting. New York State did not update today. 887 positive uh, cases on the most recent update. And in the hospital last week, when they last reported, 498 and 47 people in the ICU. And we also did not get an update out of Walgreens. Let's see here. Maybe, maybe it did finally come in. Let's check on that. And we can see here, no, nothing from Walgreens today. Alrighty, guys, that's all I have for today. Maybe I'll have some more stuff for tomorrow. I'm sure New York State will probably update. Uh, Walgreens should update tomorrow. That's the way it works. If it's a holiday on a Monday, the Walgreens update will be in the next day. Alrighty, that's all I have for today. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Again, let's try for over 100 likes today. And subscribe down below if you're new to the channel. And, of course, leave your comments down below. Did you learn something today? Let me know down below. And, of course, share this video with anyone you know. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday afternoon. And happy Memorial Day.